Phew. Excuse me. Oh. Cashew. I wonder. A million dollars. Damn. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. It is time for yet another new album review and throwback album review all in one video, courtesy of my Now and Then feature. The subject of today's Now and Then is legendary jazz guitarist George Benson. And for now, we'll be talking about his 37th album, Walking to New Orleans, Remembering Chuck Berry and Fats Domino. Now, I first found out about George Benson the same way most 80s kids did, uh, through his hit single, Give Me the Night. But as fantastic as that song was, it, it was something of an anomaly in George Benson's discography. Uh, it was much more R&B and soul than the jazz that he was famous for, and it was also a vocal song, whereas most of his work up to that point is, uh, was instrumental. So it took me a while to discover the true charms of George Benson. Now, I heard about this album a couple of months ago and was curious about it, uh, since I'm also a fan of both Fats Domino and Chuck Berry. Uh, they both passed away in 2017, incidentally. Uh, but I almost didn't pick it up because it was only 10 tracks long. Yeah, I mean, considering that most of the songs from Fats Domino's and Chuck Berry's Day were less than three minutes long, usually about two and a half minutes, I figured, well, what, this is going to be like a 25 or 30 minute album? Forget that. Uh, you know, it's just not enough jo George Benson for me in one sitting. Uh, but then when I saw it in the new releases rack at the local store a few weeks ago, I just couldn't resist picking it up and giving it a chance. And I should have known that my worries were, for the most part, unfounded. Now, this album may only be 10 tracks, and it's pretty much split evenly between Chuck Berry songs and Fats Domino songs, and pretty, mostly alternating between them. Uh, but George Benson does what he does best and stretches the songs out a little bit, gives him, himself a little time to riff and solo and improvise, and put his own unique stamp on pretty much every one of these songs. Now, George Benson does a very wise thing with this album by favoring, for the most part, the less popular cuts from each artist, uh, particularly in the case of Chuck Berry, rather than their more famous hits. Uh, this gives him a bit more freedom to put his own stamp on them, but at the same time, he also refrains from messing too much with the original arrangements, uh, which will, of course, please the purists that are more fans of Berry and Domino than they might be of George Benson. Now, one of the absolute highlights on this album is the Chuck Berry original Havana Moon which has one of the best guitar lines I've heard in ages, and uh, a tempo that both it both sways and shuffles at the same time. Uh, it, it has to be heard to be, to be appreciated. Check that track out, first of all. Uh, the title track, which was originally by Fats Domino, Walking to New Orleans, is just about the only other down-tempo tune with its gently strolling beat. Uh, that makes it another highlight. And, well, let's face it, this album was full of highlights. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee and You Can't Catch Me are two of the upbeat Chuck Berry tracks, and they're nothing but fun. I mean, most of this whole album pretty much is nothing but fun. Uh, I'm Personally, I am more of a Fats Domino fan than a Chuck Berry fan, so his half of the album, uh, so to speak, was bound to be part the part that I'd enjoy the most. And to my delight, George Benson covers two of my Fats favorites, Ain't That a Shame and Blue Monday both of which are absolutely fantastic at the hands of George Benson. This album is enjoyable from beginning to end, as I mentioned, and I am so glad I gave in to the spur-of-the-moment impulse to, to buy it when I saw it. It's just fantastic. But that was now, and this is then, The Shape of Things to Come, George Benson's fifth album from 1968. And I actually inherited this CD from uh, my sister from her CD collection, so that, that's why it holds a special place in my heart, and why George Benson holds a special place in my heart. Uh, this was uh, Benson's first album with CTI Records, and his first with producer Creed Taylor, with whom he would end up working for eight years. Uh, now, Creed Taylor was responsible for signing a bunch of bossa nova acts to the CTI label in the 60s, so that partly explains why the opening track, Footnit, reminds me a bit of bossa nova. Uh, not true bossa nova, but it does have that shuffling kind of a beat to it, and the thing that really caught my ear is the flute that kind of echoes forward from way back in the mix. Uh, it's something to hear. And that song is just one of two 
George Benson originals on this album. Uh, the rest of the album's uh, tracks are covers of everything from Glenn Miller to Aretha Franklin, and he even covers The Monkey's Last Train to Clarksville. Uh, perhaps some odd choices of songs, yeah, but uh, George Benson gives every single one of them his own unique stamp, uh, like he always does. But he also gives the rest of his band a chance to shine on uh, solos and improvs here and there. Uh, Charles Covington does some wicked organ work on the title track, uh, which was written by Barry Mann and Cynthia Weil, and was originally a minute and 55 seconds long. Uh, but here George Benson turns it into a five and a half minute long groove fest. It's just excellent. Then we've got a cover of Glenn Miller's timeless classic Chattanooga Choo Choo, which George Benson updates with, I can't figure out if it's a foxtrot or a cha-cha rhythm, or it might be neither, I'm not sure, but whichever it is, uh, he's not one to usually leave a song in its original time signature. Uh, we also get a cover of Don't Let Me Lose This Dream, which is an Aretha Franklin song that I'm not familiar with, to be honest, but that doesn't make it any less of a delight to listen to, honestly. And George Benson's guitar work on this track particularly shines especially well. The other George Benson original on this album is called The Shape of Things That Are and Were, and it's yet another fantastic track. Uh, the brass section in particular just takes this track to the next level. Uh, Last Train to Clarksville, which I mentioned a minute ago, uh, closes out this album, and it's another fine reinterpretation of a track that you wouldn't expect a jazz artist to cover. It's got this, uh, again, a, a kind of a shuffling rhythm that makes it a whole lot of fun. I find it a little funny, though, that harmonica is used on the two tracks whose titles reference trains. I can only guess that's a holdover from the romanticized mid-century images of harmonica playing hobos and bluesmen riding across the country on trains. That's, that's near as I can figure is what the connection is, but anyway. Uh, which of these albums is better? Honestly, these two albums are so vastly different that they can't really be, be compared, honestly. They're just two completely different albums. I am partial to Walk Into New Orleans just because I'm a fan of Fats Domino and Chuck Berry, but uh, Shape of Things to Come is such a unique and engaging listen, but from a totally different side of George Benson. So honestly, hey, I'd recommend both very strongly. So uh, yeah, again, this could be one that ends up in my top five for the year, but uh, yeah. George Benson, um, I can't say enough good things about him. I've really grown to appreciate him in the last several years particularly. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at George Benson now and then. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate the feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel, or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.